Good evening, wonderful people, great dear friends, wherever you are. On the face of this very planet, once again, we welcome you to our live lecture series here on this very day, the 14th day of March in the year of almost High Elohim, 2021, with the time now standing at precisely two minutes past the top of the hour, two minutes past 7 p.m. in the blessed land of, land of Biafra. Welcome to every one of you. Regardless of where you are, where you're living, where you're working, where you're domiciled, I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you, because this very broadcast is being listened to right across the surface of this very planet Earth. And as I welcome you, please endeavor to welcome other people as well. I can see that some of you are already on Instagram. Thank you very much. All of you who are there, Sydney or Fabulam Valentino, all of you who are listening via Instagram, I welcome you. All of you who are listening via Twitter, I also welcome all of you. And I do believe there are some who are listening via YouTube as well. Radio Biafra FM in Biafra Land 102.1. We are on satellite. We are on IPOB community radio. We are on Radio Biafra app. We are on tuning. We are everywhere, essentially. It doesn't matter what Facebook does. We are everywhere. And I believe that somebody is streaming this very live content on my Facebook page because they have banned me and they don't want me to broadcast on my page anymore. They are terrified, they are afraid. The one entity the zoo is afraid of is IPOB. The one platform that drives them insane is Radio Biafra. And the one person that torments them all the time is in Namdi Kanu. And we shall continue to do so. As I welcome you, please welcome other people. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to all of you. Once again, wherever you are, this night is going to be explosive. It is going to be expository. It is going to be should I say an expose on the mindset of the Fulani Janja within the zoo and those who are working for them from the south? After this broadcast this evening, if you do not wish to see an end to the damnable zoological republic of Nigeria, believe you me, you are even less of an animal than I had thought before. Get your pen and your paper ready. If you do not have them, please, I'll give you some time to go and get it. It's very, very important that you note everything we are about to divulge this very evening, morning or night, depending on where you are. Because right now, even in Asorok, they are listening. Everywhere. Those who haven't gone deaf and dumb yet, they are listening. Even people are hiding under their wives' wrapper, behind their wives' wrapper, I should say, to listen to us. Some have not taken an excuse. They have gone downstairs into the car to listen to Radio Biafra. If you go to Abuja now or to Lagos, the important part, everywhere is at a standstill. People are waiting for this very broadcast earnestly. And this evening, we are going to preach the gospel of heaven as we have been mandated to preach. Chukwu Kikadiyama is with us. And that is why no matter what our enemies does, we, Biafra must definitely come. First of all, before we proceed, we are going to pray. But before we do so, I must announce who I am. I am Mazinam the Kanu the leader of the largest mass movement on the face of this very planet Earth, indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, by none, the very best, the very finest collection of men and women fighting for the liberation of the kingdom of heaven that is due to be birthed on this very earth. We have come to do the work of the Most High Elohim. That is why, as always, this very glorious movement, this very IPOB is here to stay. So also is Eastern Security Network. I lead IPOB. I am the director of radio Biafra and Biafra Television. And by the very spe special grace of God Almighty in heaven, Elohim, Adonai El Shaddai, Chikukika a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra. As I said, I believe that by now you have your pen and your paper ready. You can listen to us via Twitter at Mazinam the Kano. You can listen to us via Instagram at Mazinam the Kano underscore dash, the one at the bottom, official. At Mazinam the Kano official. I believe that those who administer my page will also be able to circulate that very link. In fact, post the link for my Instagram and also the one for Twitter. So that should Facebook mess up, people can go there to listen. 
I know that some of you are listening, of course, via IPOB community radio. Before I proceed, we are going to pray. And as always, I am going to pray in the oldest language known to man, the language of heaven, this very language, the angels that surround the throne of grace of the almighty in heaven are bowing down and singing praises to him in Igbo language. And that is the language that I'll use to pray this evening. You <laughs> Ni no kwasi de kwasi na ni fere go fufun na nke bere. Jage mama tori. Obu ni mono da ni ni na ni ge fere go fufun na nke bere de ngosi. Ani ga jage ma ni ge bule ha nso ge lu. Ni no obu na ni ge bu chineke na kusuru le nke ndiaga. Male ko ke ke na nke bere de ngosi. Le ko mo ge bo biafra kam ne chege ni ru na bale IPOB no wani ne. Ndi ezu o mumu mu chineke. Chete kwa ni nyeni ne nka ni ne men na nke bere de ngosi. Ozi nka ni na agbaso onyi me li gwe bu ni hi ha nso ge. Maracola and Yabano Baho. O four potching any nickel ake at Gabiga. Mono Kun song again, I did him a room baby. Obron or that mass again. Now land song take a bobby afran and keep a crony him make a canyon one in Berlin and keep way. He gets you a bacotania soon. Where half a candle over maybe land in the Navy Gun and Cabra and Gossip. Open a carry corner and keep way. Open an again, Merono will go on a Biafra Gabber and under Nabogan. Nka bo kwa ban nu ki ku ni si mese bede ngos ni hi ni ku si o ka kwa ma na eli gono wa bia na isi njerebe ka ma na oku nso nke ga ga ere obu na oku nso ga na nkwa nke ku ani ka gbakwa soro ku we na akoku aha nso ga na abali a na ututu na ehi he no wani no krikri we na si go nye de nso na ro mbe bi ga bi ga ki we sa nye pere Biapaku uden kanye na so na kwan kanye na bebo metuta ni no bi ni no bu na ni bu chi leke na ke puru minye ni na le ba ko mo ma din di ekwe nsu ndi ekuru mo ochi chiri si we gba ko ebe ni na we na agbu isu si ke me gita le ese gi na lo wa bo biafra e ge kwe ke de tu a we me e ge kwe ka ndi no we chi aha nso go ti ni na ga ti mo ocho gu mo aka ga ti ochi o bu ko agbu chi leke na ka ga ti ochi aka si ke ebe chiko kika bia man Ndia o ndia wo mu yana akoku yo mboni ne ke bo no ona ga za hebere oba han so e ka ga koto na na obu na age bo ni masuri hen ina obu na obadra ka e ka nyino na nke bredi ngosi we na adogi ni CIPOB no woni ne ndi nchi state security network wo mu gebere ni hanu no woni ne na nke bredi ngosi zinu lo abrobo bia fra na nke igwe bi kono nyanya ma wihe ma nyanya ezi ngota nyanya ezi chiche nyanya ma wihe nke puri chi Dikis we kwa nyina kwa nige nyani ko ga buri petasa na bia fraga bia ani ga jagma we tori bulia han so ge loko woni ne we mara na ezie ne zere mo bia fra bo nu chi neke ko bori ne keka bia we se no bo chi neke na nke pru mi nyeni ne nyana ha bia fra no bo mara dendo ani we na asu no tu na so pro na eja maga adres o sa han so ge stene be maro ne bu kanado ge ise 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 i prayed in the language of heaven as we live Asu sunde muzi, o basi beni gwe, 
My people in Akwaibom and Cross River, they say Abase. My brethren in Ejolan, they say Tamono. All glory belongs to thee. Our people from Ishekiri, they will say Orise. We call him Olisa Benibwe. The same thing, the same family. Indivisible under God Almighty in heaven. Now we are going to preach this very gospel as mandated by heaven. <laughs> because heaven will give us message we give to the living. If you, don't, if you don't have a pen and paper ready with you this evening, then you will not learn anything at all. This broadcast this evening goes out to all the fulefus of this world, those who believe foolishly, I should say, and idiotically believe in one Nigeria. Those who, out of self-hate and deprecation, jettisoned everything that made them humans and instead subscribed to an identity given to them by foreigners, by Europeans. I want all of you to pay very close attention to this very broadcast this evening. Omahi Wike, Obiano, all these people, if we refuse, I want you to pay attention to what I have to say. All those in, in Abuja and in Lagos, foolishly spending the best years of their lives in another man's land, this is also for you this evening. You have heard this clip before, some of you a thousand times over, but this evening we want to bring a fresh meaning and perspective into what this very Janjaweed said very many years ago, before now, before Biafra, Ujuku's Biafra, I should say, and now before the Biafra of IPOB. What this man had to say predates the 1966 coup. What this man had to say predates all the difficulties and problems that have bedeviled the zoological republic till date. I want you to understand something this evening. I want to prove to the whole world because I know that the British, those that run the zoo, the British High Commissioner, Katuna Lang, is a woman, a white woman, US ambassador, all the diplomats that are listening because anytime we broadcast, the whole world comes to a standstill, they all listen. They are listening this evening. And I will encourage them to also bring their pen and their paper ready, please. I want to prove beyond every conceivable doubt that Fulani is the problem of Nigeria. Fulani started the problem of Nigeria from day one. Over the years, they toned down their rhetoric, they moderated their behavior. Now they have come into battle with AK-47 and their Nama, their cow. You have listened to this clip a billion times over. This was the clip I played in the year 2015 that led the late Buhari, because Buhari is dead, the late dead Buhari, to comment about Radio Biafra, to say that they will ban Radio Biafra because of this very clip I'm about to play now. And I want you to come to this broadcast this evening with an unbiased mind. Come very clean and clear that God Almighty may judge you justly. I am going to play this very clip for you. And upon this very clip and what this man said, are we going to base our discussions and analysis this very evening, morning, noon or night, depending on where you are. Listen very carefully, I beg of you, please. It's very, very important. And as I'm doing so, please, somebody should endeavor to put it on my page. In fact, on all the platforms, that the world may know that we are not the aggressors, that the world may know that Fulani people are troublemakers. Fulani people never wanted Nigeria to work from day one. Fulani people, they are the bane that Nigeria is backward today, is down to only one group of people, the Fulani tribe. When I say it now, I know that Kadira Mohammed will say this was what obtained in, in Rwanda in places and things happen. And they said, it's pure rubbish. What we are presenting this evening are facts and figures. Please listen very carefully, especially a from Ibo land. 
Listen very well. All the idiots talking against Biafra, listen very carefully. All the idiots campaigning for one Nigeria, one zoo, listen very carefully, please, to understand how foolish you are. I have now come away from blaming Britain and Europe for coming to Africa, bastardizing, balkanizing, dividing, and rendering us asunder, all of us, and giving us artificial boundaries, which we accepted because we are very daft. I want to bring the problem a closer home. I want to bring the issues closer to you this evening, especially for those of you who are in Nigeria to understand the depth of your stupidity and your foolishness. I'm not insulting you. I'm only giving you facts that will guide you away from darkness into the light, which we are pointing you towards. Listen carefully, please. Major talks about killing your premier. Add on top of that, the North's general Listen. hate of the East. And you can start to get the picture of the sort of tribal tension Nigeria was heading towards. One thing I've noticed, Premier, while I've been here, is that Northerners seem to have, I mean, it was called an obsession about the Igbos. Could you perhaps explain that to me? Well, the Igbos are more or less the type of people whose desire is mainly to dominate everybody. If they go to a village, to a town, they want to monopolize every thing in that area if you put them in a labor camp as a laborer within a year they will try to emerge as headman of that camp and so on well in, in the past our people we are not alive to their responsibilities because you can see from our northernization policy that in 1952 when i came here there weren't 10 northerners in our civil service here then i tried to have it northernized and now all, all important posts are being held by northerners is this policy of filling all key posts in the north solely with northerners and not with other nigerians a temporary or permanent one in actual fact what it is is a northerner first if you can't get a northerner then we take an expatriate like yourself on contract if we can't then we can employ another Nigerian, but on contract too. This is going to be permanent, I should say, for the, as far as I can foresee, because it would be rather dangerous to see the number of boys who are now turning from our, all our learning institutions coming out with having no, no work to do. I'm sure whichever government of the day might be, it will feel rather embarrassed and it might even lead to bloodshed. Doesn't this damage the idea, sir, of uh, all people in all regions in Nigeria being fellow citizens of one country. Well, it might, but uh, um, you are, I mean, new to our region, but how many northerners are employed in the east or in the west? The answer is no. And if there are, there may be 10 laborers employed only. In I hope you have listened to, that is the voice of the man that Buhari was emulating when he came into office. Buhari was following the footsteps of this very man you've listened to now. He was the Sadwana of Sokoto, the leader of the Northern Nigeria People's Congress. He was the leader of the North. Anytime you have a Janja Wheat say they are founding fathers, they were referring to this very man. You just heard his voice now. He was interviewed. Should I say rather bizarrely, independently, so to speak, by a BBC journalist? I believe that was in the late 50s to early 60s. These are the people responsible, so we are told, um, for bringing the so called, uh, should I say, flag independence to Nigeria. Anytime you hear, be the Senate president or anybody from the northern part of the zoo talk about their founding fathers, they were talking about this man. And this man was asked this question by a white man. The interviewer is a white man working for the BBC. They asked this black man, this very baboon in the zoo, his name is Sir Ahmad Bello. He was knighted by the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth. Understand this very clearly. That is why I said it is better for you to bring your pen and paper this evening. Even if you don't come to lectures again without a pen and paper, it's better for this evening you must have one. Very, very critical, please. This man, alongside Awolowo and Azikiwe, and to an extent, 
Tafawa Balewa, they were responsible, so to speak, for create, should I say, forging the new Nigeria that Britain had created. This was in 1960, after independence. And he was asked a simple question, a very simple question. Why do you hate Igbo people so much? These are full of people. I want Okezi Baso, I want Hopu Zodema, I want all of them to, I want Wike, I want them to pay attention this evening. I want Ohane Zendera and Andioshi, George Obioso, pay very particular attention because what this man said in late 50s and early 1960s is still prevalent today in our lives. And I'm going to prove it to you this evening, one after the other. The man asked him, in other words, this is where I get upset with Katuna Lang and the so-called British mission in Nigeria. Britain is aware because this is a BBC journalist interviewing a Fulani leader. When there was no strife, there was no war, there was no problem. When they were planning and creating their useless one Nigeria, please pay attention, please. Pay attention, please. To understand how foolish we came, to understand how foolish Osarema, to understand how foolish Johannes, anybody talking about one Nigeria, I want to prove to you tonight. Heaven is my witness that the person is a fool, especially if you're a Biafran. They ask this man, and when they talk about Igbos in those days, they're talking about everybody from the East. In fact, to an extent, even including the West. These are the people they claim that created one Nigeria for us. These are the people they call their founding fathers. That is why after this broadcast this evening, I do not think that Nigeria can ever be the same again. They asked him, why do you hate the Igbos? At the time that this question was being asked, there was no full and any headsman problem, no banditry, no insurgency. There was no problem. There was euphoria all over the world that the, uh, the, the largest black nation had emerged. That's they call Nigeria. And this is one of the leaders, one of the key, the leading lights of that very period of history of Africa, so to speak. And what he started with was hatred for Biafrans. In other words, for a BBC journalist to ask Ahmadu Bello, why, are, why is it that Fulani people are obsessed with the hatred for Igbo people? What I'm telling you that didn't happen yesterday. Oh, please, I don't want you to. Don't, do not misquote me or misunderstand me. This happened many, many years ago as Nigeria was being formed. They asked him, why do you hate Igbo people so much? Not only that, the man asked him, why do you have an obsession is a type of madness? In other words, BBC of all people, BBC and by extension the British government knew from day one that Fulani had an obsession against Igbo people. And will kill them. That will. They knew it. Everybody knew it. But Azikiwe decided to keep quiet about it. The same thing that Igbo governors, Eastern governors, Biafran leaders are doing today. That is why we are in the mess we are in. Because this is the person who founded, so co-founder uh, of the new Nigeria that Britain had created. He is the Fulani leader. It was because of the death of this man that we lost 5 million people between 67 to 70. It was because of the death of this man that Gowon declared war on Biafran people. It was because of the death of this man that was why Aburi never stood. The agreement reached between Ojuku and Gowon never stood a chance of working because the Fulanese were hell-bent on avenging the death of this man. I'm going to play his voice once again and I want people to please try and determine for themselves if by killing this man, Nzogu had done anything wrong. It was Nzogu that killed him because Nzogu was a Nigerianist. Nzogu was a patriot. Nzogu felt that what this man, I want to let the world understand what led to the war and why Britain said that Nigeria must go to war against Biafra. You must pay attention this evening. I'm begging you. I'm going to play his voice again before he started. Somebody uh, I provided an intro, kind of a voiceover. 
for you to understand so that what is happening today with Fulani Janja Buddhism, banditry, the hatred, the fact that when this regime of Buhari came in in 2015, their plan was a northernization agenda. What this northernization means that a Fulani man will occupy every position of importance in Nigeria. This thing was said over 60 years ago, but in 2015, when Buhari was, they implemented it, they're still implementing it till to this very day. That is why I feel sorry for the South, by which I mean the East and the West. I even want my Yoruba brethren who are listening to pay very close attention. I want them to understand the mess everybody's in in the South. I want them to begin to appreciate the level of trickery, the level of takia, the level of deception the Fulanis are willing to deploy in order to conquer you, both spiritually and physically. Because as at the time this man said this very thing, when I said, they said, I hate Fulani, I don't hate anybody. It was Fulani that hated me first. They did not just hate me first. They have consistently hated me. Are you listening to me? Now I'm going to play it again. Listen to the intro and you listen to the voice of the man they claim created Nigeria. And you will understand from what he's saying, it is what APC is implementing today. APC, Fulani Party. Fulani Party of Bandits and Terrorists. That's what they said, Northernization Agenda. The North, first. And some of you may be wondering, why is it that Fulani has this hatred for Igbo people? I want Igbo people to pay very close attention. I want to harness the Indian and you to pay attention. I want every affiliate to listen very carefully. You may be wondering, why is it, for no reason, we were not at war in late 50s and early 60s. Nothing was wrong. We did nothing to Fulani. Fulani a Fulani leader, the, the, the leader of the Fulani people, the leader of the entire North, came out to say, we hate Igbo people. And he gave the interview to BBC. Now, how can you blame me for hating them? I don't even hate them. I'm only trying to fight them or stop them from killing our people. That's what I'm doing. I want to tell you that what they are planning, what the, the plan of APC today was what Amadou Bello has scripted down. I said that was why in 2003, 2011, you see, 2003, 2007, 2011, Buhari kept contesting. People never knew the reason why Buhari overthrew the government of Shagari. Buhari, this is his mentor. His hero is the Sadwana. If you listen to him when he was alive, if any of you paid any attention to what Buhari was saying, Buhari kept saying that they killed Sadwana, that they killed Sadwana, that's his hero. The reason why Sadwana hated the Igbo people was because the East was the only part that their type of Islam never got to. You may think it's about politics and economic development. It's because, because the Fulani sword and Quran got into Yoruba land. The Fulani sword and Quran decimated the entire Middle Belt. The Fulani sword and Quran got into, even up to Upper Benue. They never made it to the East. That is their anger. Till tomorrow morning. And they will never stop. I want Wike, I want Hosodemba, I want all these idiots, I want to harness and get an ambush to pay very close attention. The reason why they keep telling you every day, stay in one Nigeria, do what you can, is because they want to conquer you. It's their job, it's in their bone marrow, it's in their DNA. This is a man who is a nationalist. The most painful thing is that Britain knew about all these things, but they kept quiet. Britain never said anything. Britain kept quiet. I want to play it for you again. This is the leader of the Fulani people. I want to tell you that the hatred they are pouring out today, the reason why Buhari can form a government and there is no evil man in it, the reason why they can be doing all the nonsense they are doing, customs or not, EFCC, not is because it is a grand plan. And I want you to compare and contrast the behavior of Fulani politicians with that of the idiots from your village. In the south, do you see how the Fulani is laid down a template, not just a template of political domination, but a template of complete and total annihilation of every indigenous ethnic group in Nigeria? 
what APC is carrying out today was laid down before even 1960. They have been pursuing that same agenda year in, year out. But some of you are too blind to understand what lies in front of you. This evening, we are exposing them that the world may understand, that the world may know why we are doing what we are doing. I'm going to play it for you once again. Please pay very close attention. And this time around, I'm going to interrupt. As they proceed, I will interrupt to analyze and bring to your knowledge and understanding the evil that full and potence for everybody, not just for Igbo people, not just for Biafrans at large, but not even just for the entire South, but for everybody who calls himself a Nigerian. Because as at the time that this man said this, uttered this very, should I say, you know, vengeful words or insightful words, Nigeria was not at war. There was euphoria everywhere. Independence is around the corner. They are about to be, they are about to, to take over everywhere. Every black people are about to rule black land. That was done for it. This is the man that they refer to as uh, their founding father. This is the leader of Boko Haram. This is the leader of Flanny Bandits. This is the leader of Flanny Headsmen. This is the leader of every terror group that has ever emerged. He is the spiritual leader. He's dead, of course. His death was what caused the war because Britain wanted vengeance. Britain knew that Fulani hated Igbo people because Britain hated Igbo people. Britain hates Biafra with a passion. Pure raw hatred. Raw hatred is the same hatred that the Fulanis have. You cannot explain it. Why Britain hates Biafra is beyond me. We are Anglicans, though. We are Christians, though, for your information. We attend Anglican church. We are Christians in the main. England is supposed to be a, a Christian nation, but their hatred for Biafra is immense. And isn't it very ironic? The only part of the zoo called Nigeria that is entirely, or should I say homogeneous, Christian, no Islam. That is the people that he, Britain hates most of all. And every Sunday, like today, every Anglican church in Biafra land have contributed their money. Very soon, they will ship it all the way to Canterbury. Are you following what I'm saying? I want you to listen once again, please, to understand those who are, are who, the fermenters of trouble in Nigeria. I want to prove to the world tonight that Fulani people are the originators of every problem in Nigeria. It was because of this statement and the statement that this man made at Sandhurst that was why Izogu killed him. Not because of any hatred for Fulani. And tell me why such a person should be parading himself as a Nigerian. In fact, even the journalist asked him, but shouldn't Nigerians be free to live anywhere they like? He said no. He said no. And tomorrow morning you sing a place to Nigeria, my country. Do you see why I call Nigerians fools and animals? This is the reason why. Because they can reason very well. I don't understand the reason why somebody should be proud of a country where those they claim shaped it are against a particular group of people because Islam did not get there. Because they did not conquer us. Let me play for you again. Thank you. Listen. It talks about killing your premier. Add on top of that the North's general hate of the East. And you the North hates the East. Ask yourself why. They love Yorubas a little bit because that's why they said uh, we are Yoruba forest, we're not leaving, we're not going anywhere. That's what Mietiala said, a terrorist group. That uh, uh, now and again they go to Asorok and they collect their own share of the money. They buy more weapons, they chatter private jets, they fly in the weapons, and they're in our forest, killing us every day. I want people to understand what I'm saying tonight is very, very important. Why is it that the North hates the East? What is this hatred for an evil man, I'm asking? Because we are hardworking, because we are blessed, because Elohim is with us, because anywhere we go to, we bring light and we bring blessing of God upon that very place. Is that why you hate us? For no reason. Britain is aware, EU is aware, US is aware. Everybody knows. Now, why do you want us to stay in a land brimming with such hatred for a particular group of people. 
that led to the death of 5 million of those people. We are the only people in the world, only Biafrans, Biafrans are the only people in the world, having suffered the level of genocide we are subjected to, or should I say Holocaust. And we are still in that same country that killed us. Only us. No other people. Nowhere else in the world. That is why we must change our thinking. That is why the likes of idiots like Nwike and those of them, all these idiots who must reason tonight after i think the week has been listening to our broadcast now he's changing Oyibo names white man's name in Igwacha to more local names that's what they're all listening i think he went to waterlands and changed it to something else it's no longer waterlands he was asking them the why, why are you asking white man's name if he if he was sincere he should have gone a step further to say but Harcourt is a white man's name the name is Igwacha. Maybe someday, sometime in the new Biafra, we shall get there. I want you to listen once again to what this animal has to say. I call Ahmadu Bello an animal because only an animal can speak this very way. His hatred is not for white people. No, 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 not at all. In fact, he said that I will give jobs to people that colonized you and, and subjugated you. He said, no, don't worry, I'll give jobs to you more before I can give it to an evil man. Are you following what I'm saying? I will give jobs to a white person. This is Africa. Your so-called Africa. One Africa. Let Africa be united one. These are the idiots that made it impossible for Africa to unite. And he's a nationalist, we are told. He's a founding father. According to Fulani Janjaweed, he is the founding father. I want you to pay attention tonight, for goodness sake. Listen. I start to get the picture yes. of the sort of tribal tension Nigeria was heading towards. Tribal tension before 1960. So what is happening today has been there from the beginning. And I'm asking people, you have suffered this mess for nearly 60 years. The same tribal tension for 60 years. When is Nigeria going to get better? I'm asking. When will this tribal tension stop? The fact of the matter is that it can never stop. Never, ever, ever. Because the hatred is, is deep-rooted. It's in their system. They cannot help it because we have not conquered the East. That's what they're saying. We have not dipped our Quran in the Atlantic Ocean that flows on the coastal lands of the East. We must take them. And that's what they're doing. Do you understand them now? All of you that believe in one Nigeria, do you begin to see that you what you did was merely to dig your own graves? You have dug your graves. I'm telling you. That's what you have done. Look at the mindset of the people that you are in the same country with. And this man, you can hear from his accent, he's polished, he's educated. I think he, he studied at, um, I don't know if he was Cambridge or Oxford. You can hear, he's a prince of the Fulani Sultanate. You can hear him the way he speaks, very crisp English. It was this man that made me to realize that mastery or command of English language does not confer upon you any, should I say, any intellect of any sort whatsoever. It doesn't. The fact that you can speak English doesn't mean you're intelligent. This was the man that made me to realize that very fact. Listen to him, please. This is the founding father, so to speak, of Nigeria. Fulani, I want to prove to the world that it was the Fulani. That what is happening in Nigeria today is the cause of the Fulani. They are the problem that you have. Listen to him. One thing I've noticed, Premier, when I've been... That is the voice of the British interviewer, BBC journalist, asking him. He's asking him, Premier, this, he was then the Premier of the North, asking him, Premier, one thing I have noticed is the obsession, the hatred, the raw hatred of Fulani have for Igbo people. Where is it coming from? A white man, BBC, they realized all the way from London that there are two people, two, these two tribes you have, uh, you know, in a place called Nigeria that they themselves created. One hates the other and wants him dead. Yet you're talking about one Nigeria. I'm asking you, with this level of hatred, on what basis, therefore, are you campaigning or championing one Nigeria, especially if you're from the East? On what basis, I ask you? How? Please explain to me. On what basis? Let us hear the journalist and the question that he, he had to ask. Listen. Yeah, is that Northerners seem to have, I mean, it was called an obsession about the Ebers. 
Northerners have an obsession about the Igbo still tomorrow morning. That is where we are told that Ahmed Lawan, now the president of their so-called Zoo Senate, went to Imo State and was saying everybody should come and join APC. This is their plan from the beginning to conquer us from the beginning. Conquest! But unfortunately, a typical Igbo idiot in Abuja or Lagos cannot seem to realize this. The handwriting is there on the wall. They cannot seem to realize what is going on. A white man all the way from Europe is asking a black baboon in Africa, why do you hate your fellow black man? The man said, I will give you a job as a white man. The same white man that we are struggling to become independent from. The same white man that killed us, put us in jail and everything. And that is the man that is the hero of Fulani. Do you understand it now? Do you now see why the zoo must fall? Do you see why Nigeria cannot stand? Do you see why anybody championing one Nigeria is an absolute and, and total idiot? A fool beyond the fool. Do you now understand why we say so all the time? Listen, please. Could you perhaps explain that? Explain to, to us why you well, hate us. The Hebrews are more or less the type of people whose desire is mainly to dominate everybody. In what way? I want to answer the full and agenda with this was, I want you to understand. I want to also let you people on the no, this evening or morning or night, depending on where you are. The reason why I said anybody calling himself a Niger Delta or South South suffer from the same mentality, the same idiocy. Do you see where they got the nonsense from that Igbos are domineering? And in a short while, I will ask this man to tell us in what way, or should I say ways, are Igbos domineering? Because if you go now to some parts of um, Cross River or Aquaibom, or how she said before, not now, not anymore, and um, Bayelsa or Delta and ask them, they say, we don't want to be dominated by an Igbo man, especially my his own brothers and sisters, echoing the same sentiment of a full Janja with that hits them. Because when this man was talking about the Igbo people, he was talking about everybody from the East, and sometimes from the West as well. Listen carefully. One Nigerian is, listen all. Those that believe in one Nigerian, let's be the future. I want, this is their template. It can never change because they are ginger weed. They follow their leader. Whatever their leader does, whatever, if the leader says to them, oh, go and kill people, they will go and kill. This is Flanny ginger weedism. This is the man that the late dead Buhari was following in the footsteps. Now, listen. Igbos, they asked him, why do you hate Igbo people? He said, because they are dominating. The same thing they said about the Jews all over Europe. Be just because they are successful, because God blessed them. That is all, that nothing more. I hate Jews. Why? Uh, I don't know, but I hate them. Why do you hate them? Oh, uh, they, they took over the banking system. Okay, because they are doing something that you cannot do. The same thing about Igbo people in, in the zoo called Nigeria. By Igbo, I mean the whole of Biafra in Nigeria. I want our people to pay attention tonight so that their brain can be cleansed properly. They asked him, a white man asked him, why do you hate Igbo people? Asking a Fulani man, I want Fulani to know that you brought the hate to me. You are the original haters of other people. You have no right to complain. You people are the original haters. You started the hatred before anybody else. Listen to what he has to say. Igbos are domineering. Now we want to find out how uh, how the Igbo people go to Sokoto and take over Sokoto. He's an Igbo man, the 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 um the, the Sultan of Sokoto. He's an Igbo man, the MA of Kanu. Is the an Igbo man, the MA of Bantu. I don't I, please tell us how did they dominate you? If they go to a village a town they want to monopolize everything in that area they want to monopolize everything as i told you these are congenital liars fulani are liars they are liars and deceivers and i feel sorry for some of you in the zoo some of you are allowed fulani to deceive you they can't deceive me they can never deceive me they asked the premier of he's the premier the political head of the north he said why do you hate Igbo people? They are domineering. How? Any village they go to, 
They want to dominate everything. Now I want to ask him, Igbos, we are everywhere in the north. Is an Igbo man an Emir in the north from before his time till today? But he said they want to dominate. What he meant to say is that God blessed them because there is something about Biafran people that the Fulanis can see that he, incidentally, the Fulanis cannot see in themselves. This man understands one very simple fact that the Biafran people are like the Jews of Africa, as Henry Kissinger said and wrote in his memo to President Nixon, that he believes that Biafrans, especially Igbos, are the wandering Jews of Africa. Henry Kissinger said it, wrote it in the memo. Go and check. Go to the Library of Congress in America and go and check. I'm not going to give it to you. Some of you are very lazy. You cannot read. You cannot do any research. Go and research it yourself. You say that. How are they dominating you? They are dominating me by coming into my town and developing it. They are coming into my town and teaching our children how to read and write properly. They are opening businesses. They are successful. That is how you dominate them. Are you listening to me? So because Britain is the largest inward investor into the USA, that means that Britain is not dominating USA. Or in the, in the late 80s and early 90s, when Japanese people and business, businessmen were the highest investors in the USA with Toyota, Nissan factory and everything else, that means that Japan is now dominating USA. Do you see how they reason? Do you see why I call them gingerweed? Do you see why their brain, do you know, do you see why I cannot be in the same country with these people? With this level of hatred, why do you hate me? Okay, because I am successful at business and economics. That's all. And because of that, I should be killed. Efulefus, are you listening? I want to prove to all the Efulefus that the hatred today in the zoo was brought about by Fulani Janjawidism. Listen carefully, please. If you put them in a labor camp if as you put a laborer, mm -hmm. within a year, they will try to emerge as headman. If you put them in a labor camp, if you take Igbo people, in those days, Biafrans, I mean, anywhere they are, you put them in a labor camp. That's what he's saying. They will emerge as the headman. Why are they emerging? Is it not the same way that Joseph emerged in, the, in Egypt, in the house of Pharaoh, from nothing, to show that the blessing of God is upon these people? You cannot suppress. There's a saying where we come, I can't get with John. You see the moon, your hand cannot cover it. It's blessing. It is called blessing. It is not domination. It's blessing from God. And that blessing is for the whole of Africa. Not just even for Nigeria, it's for the whole of Africa. The blessing that Biafra brings to the table is for the whole of the black world, wherever you have any black person residing. You cannot stop it. Nobody can stop it. That blessing from God, that is why a white man can see a Biafran laborer and say there is something in this man. Because of that, I'm going to make him the head man or the foreman of this company. Because the blessing of God is upon that man. The same way it is upon Israel. You cannot, it's a, it's a blessing from Elohim. You can't take it away. Bless, instead of people to see this blessing, what they see is is they are coming to dominate me. Do you understand it now? Zoological Republic. Are you following me this evening? I thought it's a very special broadcast. I want the world to understand. I want because I know the US ambassador is listening, the, U, the UK High Commission, all of them are listening. I want to know it was Fulani that brought in hatred into Nigeria. Fulani, no other person, Fulani. This is their master speaking. This is their progenitor speaking. Over 60 years ago, and all those things he said over 60 years ago are still prevalent today in the damnable zoological republic of nigeria why do you hate them they dominate how are they dominating if you put them in a labor camp because at the time that this man was referring to all the labor camps all the factories that are run by white people by the british and uh, Regardless of what you may say about them, those people, <laughs> those people, they know how to be even-handed. If you're hardworking, they'll promote you. These British people saw the blessing upon these people from the East. Children of light saw them. That was why 
Igbo people dominated the civil service, dominated not because they wanted to, but because God's mercy and blessing was upon them. That is why they are hated. Not because they've done anything wrong. You hate them because God is with them. And no man, no man can destroy it. This is a blessing from Elohim. They call it domineering and domination. Now you understand me, don't you? Do you understand now? The Igbo people are ancient people, very old. The oldest people on the face of this very earth, bar none. The world, ancient, that's the meaning of it. Old people, old. The center of the world. That is why they occupy the center of the world. Zero longitude, zero latitude, the very center, the very beginning of life itself. God did not make any mistake by placing us there. I want all of you, both the Fulefus and those who are normal, who are listening to me this evening, to understand this very gift. The more we misuse this gift that God gave to us, the angrier God will be with us and the more destruction we are likely to face. And there is only one solution to this problem, freedom. Because when freedom comes to Biafra, freedom will come to every black person on the face of this very earth. That is that thing that people see and they say they're domineering. They are this, they are that. It's a blessing from God, Almighty in heaven. <laughs> Let us listen to Fulani Janjaweed. Why do you hate an Igbo man? If you place him in a labor, did you place an Igbo man in a labor camp? The time that we are referring to, it was the British who were in charge. It was the same white people that were picking Igbo people and making them foreman and headman because the grace of Elohim is upon them. When you see them, the light of God is shining. That is why they give their children names like Ike Chibu, Chibweze, Nabisi. All of these names venerating Chinya, gift from God, Uninyechi. Now you understand it, don't you? Uche Chupu Gemerere. When we answer all these names, we wear it on our forehead, but we don't know what it means. We answer Tamuno, we answer Obase, we answer Abase. It's on our forehead. We answer Onisa. We, we are so much loved by Elohim that even the name of God we answer. Why shouldn't God's grace be upon us? Do you see why Biafra cannot be destroyed by any mortal? It's indestructible. No matter how angry God is with us, he remembers his promise. He remembers the purpose for which Biafra was created. And that promise must come to pass because the word of God said, instead of my spoken word not to happen, heaven and earth will come to pass. Upon that very authority do we stand to proclaim that Biafra must come. There is nothing that God cannot do. But to the ordinary person living in the flesh, to a mere mortal with a temporal mindset, you cannot understand it. It's only those of us in the spirit that can see it. Again, I'm more, you have to be, to be able to discern what is happening, to be able to understand what Biafra means. Some people are running about shouting, Biafra, Biafra, they don't even know. They have no idea what Biafra means. You people is an example of the fulfillment of God's promise upon the lives of men. In other words, Biafra is beyond politics. Biafra is beyond what man can understand. Now you know why we answer Umu Chineke, the children of God in heaven, unashamedly. Why do you hate Igbo people? He said they are domineering. How did they dominate you? Because anywhere they go to, the grace of God is upon them. Even the white man will call them and ask them to head a factory. And then their brothers will come and they will receive more blessing and they become millionaires and they become billionaires in a land far removed from their own because the grace of God is with them. Nihina Chibuzo, God goes before them. That's the name they give to their children. Chibuzo, before we come to your land, God has already prepared it for us. 
not to conquer you or to dominate you, but to prosper that you also may prosper. Only if Africans can see this. Only if. Only if Africa can understand what Elohim intended to do with Biafra. Maybe one day they will. Let's listen to this Janjaweed. If they go to a village, yes. to a town, they want to monopolize everything in that area. How? What do you call monopoly? Is it not the same monopoly that Dangote is having today? Do you know that in the USA, of course, we're going to take him to court in the USA. It's called antitrust laws in the USA. If you run any monopoly anywhere in the world, you will go to prison in the US for 25 years. No monopoly is allowed in the US. If you go, I think there was a report that came out a few days ago. Making it very clear that Dangote is running a monopoly. The same people accusing us of, of monopolizing everything. They are the ones that have monopolized pasta. They monopolize them um, uh, uh, indomie. They monopolize salt. They monopolize sugar. They monopolize cement. And now, finally, they have monopolized petrol as well. Because only Dangote refinery will be working. I want people to reason, especially those that went to school from the south. I want to put your mind to this. They talk about monopoly. To tell you that Florida came with a game plan. In order to conquer, you know, they feel they, they are like Lucifer, Satan, who will point through darkness in order to conquer the light that is from the east. Biafran people, they revived, they turned everything on its head. They closed all the refineries that we are working, and they now gave license to a full -name man, only one man to refine petrol. They took away cement license from everybody, including Ibeto from the east. They gave it to Dangote. Only him can import cement. Only him sugar. Only him salt. Only him pasta. Only him uh, 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 indomie, whatever you call it. Noodles. The same thing they're accusing other people of. And sometimes people shouldn't despair. When you have other tribes joining them, saying, Igbo man did this, uh, Biafra this, Biafra that, don't blame them. The devil, anybody who rises up to castigate Biafra is a child of Lucifer, a child of Satan. And can never make heaven. I said it many years, was just so many years ago, a few years ago. Anybody against Biafra cannot make heaven. If you listen to this broadcast tonight, you will understand the reason why. We answer Chibos. God goes before us to prepare a way for us. And then we come, and the grace and the blessing will be coming out in abundance. You won't understand it. It is not our own making, it's Elohim. We are his children. He must bless us. We can annoy him all we like, do all the things that we do. He will punish us, no doubt. But in the end, that blessing is there. It cannot go away. Because anytime God gives his blessing, he doesn't take it back. He's not man. Mm -hmm. Janjaweed, why do you hate Igbo people? Because they want to dominate. They are successful and God is with them. That's all. That was the reason why they killed 5 million people. And today, we are still talking about Biafra. Because Biafra is the promise of the Most High in heaven. Listen. Put them in a labor camp yes. as a laborer. Within a year, they will try to emerge as headmen of that camp. They are not trying to emerge. So on. Well, God is with them. In the past, our people were not alive for their responsibilities. In the past, the Fulani did not realize how to stop the Igbo man. Fulani did not realize how to stop Biafra. But now, we have realized it. That is what they said over 60 years ago. That is what they're still doing today. You must pay attention, please. Because you can see from our northernization policy that in 1952, when I... They now have a northernization policy. I'm going to... This, this thing is talking about happened in the late 50s, before, even before independence. Listen carefully. In the late 50s, before independence, that same thing is happening today. In a short while, I will show you how. It is called a no fulanization agenda, more like. All those years that Buhari was crying for losing elections, it was because he was saying that what their progenitor is saying, they wanted to finish this job of jihad by stealth. Started by a descendant of Uthman Domfodio. You're, you are listening to the voice of the Sadwana of Sokoto. He should have been the Sultan of Sokoto. But because he was into politics, they gave him a special title, the Sadwana of Sokoto, and shipped him to Kaduna, where he was reigning, where he was the king. 
Now listen carefully. He said, we are now alive. This was the man that wanted to continue what his great-grandfather started. His great-grandfather is Othman Danfodio. He's a prince. That was why when they came into Delta, ex exactly in when they came into, um, 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 uh, what is it again? Into Delta, I want to remember the, uh, what, is, what is wrong? Is it old age or what? I keep forgetting things these days. Opanam. When they got to Opanam on Zogu's village, they killed every male child in, in Opanam, almost. Only those outside survived because this is a prince of the Sultanate. This is a prince of the Fulani Emirate. This is a direct descendant of Othman Danfodio, the man that defeated Hausa people and took their land. This is his great, great grandson. You are listening to his voice. Othman Danfodio, that's the great, great, uh, the great grandson. No, great, great grandson, I think it's two, three generations or thereabout before him. Either the great, great grandson or the great grandson, one of those. And an Igbo man killed him. That is their anger. After, but who wouldn't kill this idiot after listening to him? He sounds like a bandit. The banditry and terrorism is them. You can, you can hear him. He sounds like a bandit. Like a bandit. It was that man that killed him because. Or uh, Nzogo said, what you're saying, sir, is anti-Nigerian. That's all. That's why he was killed. The said, they, they, they killed all of our people. Look at how you reason. Do you see the reason why anybody fighting for one Nigeria is bound to end in misery and failure? Do you understand it now? Do you now understand it? Listen once again, please. Came here, there were 10 northerners in our civil mm -hmm. service here. Mm -hmm. I tried to have it northernized and now all, all important posts are being held by northerners. Is this all important posts are being held by northerners. This happened in late 50s in the north. Now Buhari in, in 21st century or those ruling in his men because the idiot is dead are now doing the same thing at a federal level. <laughs> Northernization agenda more like Fulanization agenda. Every he said, every important position is now held by northerners. And in a short while, I'll read through all the lists. Even today, even today in 2021, every important position is held by a Fulani northerner. Do you see how they play their own game? But a Fulefu can never understand it. An ordinary Fulefu can never understand it. Let's listen. Policy of filling all key posts in the north solely with northerners and not with other Nigerians, a temporary or a permanent one. In actual fact, what it is is a northerner first. Northerner first. If you can't get a northerner, then we. If you cannot get a northerner, we hire a white man like yourself. <laughs> He's about to say, if we cannot get a northerner, we hire a white. Not a fellow black man, not a fellow African, not Africa, let's unite. When I hear people saying Africa, let's unite, you see why I laugh at them? This is supposed to be a pan Africanist. This is meant to be a man that fought for independence for his so called country. He's meant to transcend tribe and religion. But here he's saying it is going to be a permanent feature, permanent, northern and first. And today it is happening. And I want to prove it to you that it's happening today. <laughs> Zoom, Zoological Republic. You must pay very close attention to what this man has to say. Very, very briefly. Then I will tell you why they have consistently, they groom people, they train them on that northernization agenda. It doesn't change. It doesn't matter who is in power. A northerner has to be the chief of army staff. A northerner has to be the chief of defense. Everything is north. Everything north. You see the reason why? They know what they're doing because they know that we are black people. After a while, we accept it as the norm. It can no longer offend our senses anymore. Do you see it? Do you see that it didn't start today? This northern first, this northernization, fronization started all the way in the 1950s, over 60 years ago. 60 years ago, over 60 years ago, it started. Give a fillet for one bag of rice and two, two teaspoons of sugar. He will sell his entire village. Ask Fulani to come and occupy it. 
Do you see why ESN has come? We, these are, we are the first and the last line of defense against this rabid fulanization agenda. Listen to him one more time, then I'll give you the proof. Could you perhaps explain that to me? Explain. Well, the Igbos are more or less the type of people whose desire is mainly to dominate everybody. If they go to a village, to a town, they want to monopolize everything in that area. If you put them in a labor camp as a laborer, within a year they will try to emerge as headman of that camp, and so on. Well, in, in the past, our people were not alive to their responsibilities, because you can see from our northernization policy, that in 1952, when I came here, there weren't 10 northerners in our civil service here. Then I tried to have it northernized, and now all, all important posts are being held by northerners. Is this policy of filling all key posts in the north solely with northerners and not with other Nigerians a temporary or permanent one? In actual fact, what it is is a northerner first. A permanent one. If you can't get a northerner, northerner then first. we take an expatriate like yourself. You take a white man, not black. If we can't, then we can employ another Nigerian, but on contract too. On contract. This is going to be a permanent, I should say. A well, permanent! As far as I can Full army everywhere is permanent. It would be rather dangerous Over 60 years ago. to see the number of boys who are now turning from all, all our learning institutions coming out with having no, no work to do. I'm sure whichever government of the day might be, it will I feel rather embarrassed and it might even lead to black. It might lead to bloodshed. There's something that's happening today. That's one thing he got right. That unemployment in the north will lead to bloodshed, which is where you have Boko Haram, Fulani Janja, Wudism, Yetiala, you have Fulani headsmen, you have ISIS in West Africa, you have bandits everywhere. Is it not happening now? Everything, I give him credit, everything this man said is happening today. That's why I played this clip. Some of you have seen it many times over, but your brain can never digest or, or the, the, the magnitude of what this what this animal is saying. An animal he is. Now, let me prove to you that what this man is saying is absolutely over 60 years ago. There's somebody wrote, not me, the fulanization of Nigeria. What this man said, our agenda is to make sure it is a northerner first, a fulani first. Now, listen. The fulani oligarchy headquartered, look at the sultan shedding his crocodile tears. Uh, that, that idiot, Sultan, a complete fool, a complete idiot. He is shedding uh, Let's do something about one Nigeria. Uh, they know what they're doing. It's called deception back here. They know. There are some, some will play good cop, some will play bad cop. Today they will say, Arab will say, uh, We want to offend them. Tomorrow, another idiot will come and say, No, no, offend them. They know they are playing with your mind, playing with your brain. That's what they're doing. Now, listen. Have you ever observed that the Fulani Caliphate, in collaboration with the, uh, those they deceived with the Akanuri brothers and to an extent uh, Yoruba Muslims, how they have conquered Nigeria? Nigeria is a Niger I, I, I said all the Fulafus, I made one simple request go outside, just in a bar, anywhere in the world, and ask anybody, um, how do you see Nigeria? They will tell that Nigeria is an Islamic country showing you that you've been conquered. All of you, what IPOB, ESN, Biafra Generation is doing is to free you from your slavery that you don't know you are into. That is why anybody from the South, even me, we're talking about one Nigeria, I look at you as an animal because you don't know you're conquered. They have conquered Nigeria. They have captured the three arms of government. Exactly what um, the descendant of Otman Danfodio said that they're going to do. And rem but let me remind you that Otman Danfodio said they will, they will dip the Quran in the Atlantic. They remind He said, we will dip the Quran in the Atlantic. That's what Otman Danfodio said. Now his great grandson came out and said, we want to dominate everybody by blaming the Igbo. So they're coming to dominate us. So we we'll dominate everybody. And one, one wretched idiot from the Nigeria Republic that the father used to tell dog, the father will buy dog, you know, dog or bobo, buy dog from from villagers in 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 Nigeria Republic and come to Daura to sell. 
uh, on one of those trips, the the idiot met the mother of uh, Buhari and gave her one dog for free. And the next day, uh, before you know how those things, it's like chewing gum and biscuit in those days and the Fanta, uh, soft drink uh, with our women in the east, chewing gum. Uh, you used biscuit, cabin biscuit, uh, chewing gum, sweet. It's called hacks in those days. And um, a bit of Fanta, if you add Fanta, church I was her. The same thing happened in this man gave a dog to, to Buhari mother. That's how they, they, they gave it to Buhari. Dog or bog. In exchange. The idiot is not even a Nigerian. He's from the Nigerian Republic. Buhari. Where is the president of the zoo from? Those that are ruling in his name, his Fulani, to tell you that their northernization first agenda is now complete. Totally complete. They have done it. Where is their president from? Fulani. Or should I say presidency? Because there's no president. Presidency is Fulani. Chief of staff of Fulani. The chief justice of Nigeria, Fulani. Senate president of Nigeria is Kanuri, of course, is Fulani. They're all the same. Deputy speaker of the Senate is Fulani. The army chief of staff is Fulani. Navy chief of Fulani. Police IG, Fulani. Uh, National security advisor is Kanuri, of course, is some Fulani. Janjawi. DSS is Fulani. National Intelligence Agency, Fulani. Directorate of Intelligence, Army Intelligence is Fulani. Then listen to the ministries. I'm now reminded, go back to the voice of the man you heard a while back. Go back to it. Defense, Minister of Defense, Fulani. Minister of Finance, Fulani. So when they steal money, nobody can say anything. That's why somebody came out and said, Burata is still money. And their so-called presidency came out and said he didn't steal any money. We can, they control everything. They can burn papers. That was why army headquarters was set alight. Because of the loot, the stolen money. Buratai and the Fulani Janjaweed, Mietiala, they never wanted the paper trail to lead to them. They burned, they set the army headquarters on fire. That is what the Fulani do and do it very well. Some of you may be too young. You don't remember somebody called Ibrahim Taher, the former minister for communication. He was his office was at the Nitel Tower in Lagos in, on, in the Marina Nitel Tower Marina. After eating, after stealing all the money meant for Minister of Communications, he said Nitel on fire. Go and check. That is how you know that Fulani have looted money. They set the building alight. Go and check. They set alight the the uh, Federal Inland Revenue Service in Abuja when they stole money from there. Now Buratai as well set fire to Army headquarters. In Abuja. Is it very clear to you now how they roll? <laughs> Zoological Republic. That is the reason why they need to put their people everywhere. Because for them to put Hopus or them man in power, they had to make sure that the Fulani man is the chief justice of Nigeria. Do you understand the trick? It's very simple. To make sure that they get their man as Ohaneze, President General, who they need somebody they control in Imo State. You know, this that they may be driving cattle up and down, but Britain is advising them very well, and they are listening. Are you following me? To put hopes or them there, the Minister of Justice uh, Onogen was pursued, chased away from office in Abuja, chased away by by Mieti Allah, and they put Otanko, a replenton, a man that read Sharia law, Chief Justice of a secular nation. That is why I think that Nigerians are mad. Believe you me, Nigerians are insane. Their brain is not correct. Somebody that studied Sharia law is the head of the judicial system of the secular nation. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Federal capital territory, Fulani. Agriculture, Fulani. Police affairs, Fulani. Aviation, Fulani. We need to sing song with this man. Those who play music, aviation, Fulani. Communication, Fulani. Power, Fulani. What are the resources full and inhumane? Everything is full and All the 19 northern governors are full and except Benue, Plateau, Trab, and Kogi. Every northern, every apart from four, the rest are all full and And they are visitors, though. they are migrants, they are not indigenous to the place. Because full and have a game plan from the word go their game plan is to dominate and subjugate you dominate and subjugate they are the ones who are the thieves but they are busy pointing at people hey efcc it is a 
they, well, that's Fulani. Nobody steals more than Fulani dogs. They are kleptomaniacs. They are real highway robbers. After robbing, they point at somebody else. Oh, no, no, no look at him. Look at, he, he's, he, he's on investigation. And I asked Fulani, who stole more than what a Fulani man stole, Omar Odiko? Omar Odiko, when money had value, stole over five billion pounds in a mobile bank and ran to England. True or false? Who stole more than Abacha? Who stole more than Buhari when he was alive? The missing suitcases, have you forgotten? All of you, have you forgotten? Do you know why Aisha Buhari cannot travel to USA? I went to USA. But the full another claim that in the country is a terrorist, they cannot travel to USA. They cannot. Every fight cannot go to the US. Has it ever caught any of you before to ask, why is it that Aisha cannot go to the US? They claim they are clean. They claim they are pure. Some idiot just said there cannot be any looting under Buhari. Buhari is dead. All of you are criminals. Buhari was a criminal himself. How? You ask. Buhari, why is it that your wife Aisha, instead of um, hiding in America where Emil Damakos was also hiding another looter like herself, why is she hiding in the UAE, in Arab country? Because Aisha Buhari was implicated in a fraud perpetrated by Halliburton, a U.S. oil-based company. True or false? Was Aisha not indicted in America for stealing? How about her Matiku Abubakar? Fulani, can he go to the U.S.? Of course, it was a RNG visit at that time. How much did Atiku Abubakar steal? He was a rogue, a certified criminal. Fulani are the ones looting the zoo. When they cannot loot unofficially, they loot officially through Dangote, who is a money launderer. He's not a businessman, he's a money launderer. Who doesn't know he's a money launderer? Papa Sanjo knows. All of you, you keep quiet. Because you're in the zoo. Because your, your brain cells are not working. People who came from Senegambia with their cattle came into your land and deceived all of you from the north. All of you! Shame on all of you! Deceived all of you. Today, all the 19 governors of the north, only four are not Fulani. The rest are all Fulani. And they are not indigenous to the place. Sometimes they're not even up to 40,000 Fulani in a, in a state. And they take it over. Because you people are stupid. You are very, very foolish. Very, very foolish. It is that foolishness that you hope who's on them, man. We care and us idiots are promoting in the East. They don't know the consequences. By the time the consequences of what they are doing will dawn on us, they are all dead. We are all dead. And our children will be taken over. As they have taken over the North. As they have taken over the North. Chineke Kulihonjo. Lord God, have mercy on these people. Now, I have not finished. I have given you the parastatals, I've given you the ministries. Now, let me give you the key agencies headed by the Fulani Northernization Agenda, Fulani First Agenda, started by Saddam of Sekudu, Amadou Bello. The one they named the university after in Zaria, Amadou Bello. That, is, that was the reason why Nzogu killed him. Nzogu didn't kill him because he hated the Fulani. No, Nzogu killed him because he knew that the man was a reprobate. He knew the man was an evil man. How many agencies are headed by Fulani? Remember, Fulani has taken over the presidency, all the armed forces. They've taken over the, the rulership of all the, all the governors in the north. By four only. Now, let me tell you the agency set up by the Fulani. They have taken over everything. So even when they steal money, you can no longer know now. Because Fulani will steal from customs and tell Fulani in EFCC to, to burn, burn, burn the file. And the file will be burnt. EFCC, the Economic Crime Commission, whatever rubbish is called. Fulani. NFIU, Fulani. Customs, oh, Fulani. Immigration, Fulani. Prisons, Fulani. Civil Defense, Fulani. NMPC, that's their private property. That's for, is their private, private Fulani Janjaweed is their position, NMPC. Nobody dares to come close. And some idiots are saying we are Niger Delta. We are from South South. Nishi maybe. Mad lunatics. In the creek. Nishi maybe. Nara. NMPC Fulani. PTDF, whatever that means, Fulani. DPR Fulani. PPRA Fulani. 
petroleum trust have have fund fulani post authority of fulani nimasa fulani ndic fulani sec fulani nicom fulani fmbn fulani fha fulani nhis fulani np the list is endless and you're one nigeria some of you are in, <laughs> after graduation you are still looking for work they have said that anywhere you they put you into one day you will emerge as the head so you can read all the degrees you like in the zoo once you're a nigerian you can never get a job if you're from the east they've said it now that is why all of you answer, 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 answer to illiterates in abuja in the ministries now, now you understand don't you all the parastatals they've taken over the sovereign wealth fund of nigeria which is the investment arm of nigeria where all the money goes to do you know who is controlling it the daughter of the another late president of nigeria called abakiari the daughter is controlling the sovereign wealth fund of nigeria sovereign wealth. so when they invest in in things like microsoft in blue chip companies like dell or apple or whatever it is the janja weed the daughter of uh, uh, abakiari who's in charge yeah you are there shouting one nigeria <laughs> let's move our country forward in the mad lunatics all of you are your brain cells are not complete Abakiari's daughter, <laughs> Sovereign Wealth Fund, they are holding the zoo. All of you are just animals in it. Go and read the animal farm. Some animals are more equal than others. Fulani are more equal than you because their game plan was well laid out from the beginning. Well marshaled, well marshaled. If you, if you talk, they bring terrorists against you. They bring, they unleash their bandits. When that doesn't work, they bring me Yetiala with their cattle. You can never win. And they're in a hurry. They only have two more years. They're in a hurry. And by the time they're done with you, those are the, my, the pain is that those are the more, now listen to me. The Hausa people that are allowed Fulani to conquer them, they're all dead. Now their children are the ones suffering. No more Hausa kings. All you have are Fulani emirs. That's how these things are. Oh, dear me. Elohim, all glory and honor belongs to thee. That is the reason why the Fulani came to Imo State. They tried to take over Imo State. <laughs> and is now he promised them, grab the opportunity to be at the center of Nigeria's politics by joining APC. And then your land is gone forever. And then to join APC, you must give land, give land for cattle ranching for Ruga, all the rest of it. And our land will be gone. Hey, that is what Fulani told they are, they are Igbo slaves. Hopos are them. All of you are there watching Kuro Kuro Naked Eye from number four to number one. And some of you call him governor. Some of you call us my governor. Because you know nothing. Because you're cowards. I thank Elohim for IPOB. I thank Elohim for ESN. And uh, how God sent unknown gunmen, I don't know, but I'm praying for them every day. They are sent. We have elevated them to the to the to send hood. Unknown government, they are saints to us. They are angels that we are seeing. We cannot see them anywhere. In fact, they are like angels. You cannot see them. You can't see them. Unknown government, you can't see them. We don't know who they are, but they are doing the work of God. Unknown gunmen, as they as they did to them today in, in Akwaibo. We don't know who they are, but we are praying for them. Because to us, that's, they are the only ones avenging what these animals have done to us. In the name of one Nigeria. Let me tell you one thing. This nonsense that um, this the police IG said about establishing more police uh, posts. It's like churches in the zoo. The more churches you build, <laughs> the, the more, the more, should I say, immoral the society becomes, or amoral, whichever one it is. The more police stations you build, the more lawlessness you will have. There is no substitute in life for jobs. Go and create jobs, you dim witted idiots running the zoo. Not police station, not how many vigilantes you have, not how, how many AK 47 are in the society. What guarantees security from time immemorial? Uh, just jobs. People should be engaged. And I don't mind it's a devil's workshop. It's something that is that that informs the economics of people who are progressive. Very simple, but you won't know. You want to go and build more, more police stations in there. Build it now, and a non government will burn all of them down. And there are terrorist attacks everywhere. Children are being abducted every blessed day. Some of you cannot reason that you still want to be in one Nigeria. 
Can you see how they abducted Christian women in Kaduna? Some of them half naked. And you're in one Nigeria, praying for one Nigeria. The more kidnappers will strike. Very, very sad indeed. Very, very sad indeed. And on that note, before we bring today's program to a close, very shortly, because I intended to be very, very short. I have a lot of things to talk about, but I want to make it very short. Let me also remind some of you fools like Hopu Zodemma, the Janjaweed administrator of Imo State, Supreme Court appointed. He said, uh, we hijacked ESN from them. <laughs> I believe a warrior. Uh, I will read something that somebody wrote. Let me, let me, it, I think it's, who wrote this, this very brilliant piece? It's one of our good writers. Well, how come his name is not here now? Oh dear. I would have given him credit for this. I didn't write it. Somebody else wrote. In response to what Uzodemma said, he said, uh, everywhere you go, it is in Nam the Kano hijacks this and that. Uh, let me add that one day BBC, Ibo, they will accuse me. I say I have hijacked BBC Ibo, as well those idiots that work for the colonial masters. They say those of them I said, uh, Eastern governors, I hijacked, uh, I hijacked ESN from them when they never got together to form any security outfit anywhere. Umar, was saying only five, six days ago that the thought of Eastern, the thought of East-wide security network is dead. That's what they said. And let me remind who opposed them, Eastern security network is everywhere across the entire East, in Akwaibo, in Cross River, in Bielsa, we have ESN everywhere. It's not an Igbo affair. I know some of you say, it's a Igbo, Igbo. You, you, you can keep deceiving yourself. That's your business. Because they know that ESN is formidable. Everybody wants to identify with the beautiful bride, ESN. Because ESN is doing something that the zoo army cannot do. The zoo police cannot do. I see what they're doing. Dedicated men and women. Costing us a fortune. And rightfully so. Do people wonder where we get the money to support ESN from? Do you know where we get the money from? You don't know. Have we ever come to you before for money to support ESN? That's what's driving them mad. That these people they said can never be united. They don't love themselves. Uh, the same people behind IPOB, the same people behind ESN, funding it every day. You know, they are shocked. We have not come to them to beg them to give us money to fund ESN. Talking rubbish all the time. I think he's on drugs. Or uh, maybe that. Uh, he forgot his boxer shorts in a hotel somewhere in the north. So, so he's talking like an idiot. You don't keep him silly here. Or he's talking rubbish. Actually, because he's like a woman. I know the area left that, that right and center. Idiot. We are in Pampas talking rubbish. Don't you be a Pampas? Your fellow men destroyed you in hotels in, in the north. In the, uh, uh, because you're, you want to be governed. It's very like me. Oh, that idiot. May him have mercy upon you. Fool. Do you know how we come up with the name Eastern Security Network? My happiness is that very shortly the West will adopt the same name and also the Middle Belt. Because we are very, very formidable. Next time, you will not only forget your boxer shorts, you forget your red cap there as well in the hotel room. We are, we are your fellow man is rustling you because you want to be governor. Look at how useless you are. Look at how useless you are. In Imo, look at how useless you are, an idiot like you. From 419 to, to, to Governor's Lodge. Shamelessly, from you were a thief in Lagos. Obtaining by tricks, lying and sending emails. So why would you lie against ESN and, and IPOB and against me? Eh? Why would you lie? After stealing and st you are a criminal. Hope who them, can you travel to the US? You are a rogue, you're a thief. Everyone knows you as a 419er from there to governor's lodge. And you will do and you will lie and do anything to become governor. You went to the north, they, they useless to you, gave you that cap, you came back you're talking rubbish. Can you do you work on a straight line? You don't know. We we, we know the telltale signs of those of you who have been to the north and be useless from one from one Haruna to one Abubakar, from Abubakar to, to, to Uma. You useless to me all over the place. I think we don't know. You papa is not bad enough. We're not going to call you idiot like you. Oh, was like I said, I took radio Biafra from him. Every idiot, I took something from the, the from the bagger. Even the file carrier, I said I took his file. He, as, as, uh, I don't know who. Uh, 
It's not Hello Chuku that wrote this. Somebody wrote this. I want to give him credit. I cannot remember anymore. Maybe in the next two days. Every blessed day, you took this from me. You hijacked our fund. You hijacked it. I'm no longer hearing about the first fund, though. That one is gone. It's one idiot now saying, say, 2.4 billion from the UK. <coughs> anyway, that's the same where we come from, in the Boland. You know, when you see a very pretty girl, as my wife is, and my mother before her, if you don't know what to tell her, you say, oh, go and bath. That's what they're doing. They are shocked that we are disciplined and formidable because I'm doing the work that I was born to do to set the children of God free. That's what I'm doing. I've not come to this world to be a millionaire, to be a billionaire, to impress anybody, to, to ride big cars, to live it. That's rubbish. That's for moving on to very wretched poor people. Not for us. I was born into opulence. If you don't know, let me tell you. So uh, money doesn't move us. That is why every dime contributed goes towards IPOB, sustenance of IPOB, the movement, Biafra, and the Eastern Security Network. That's what we do, if you don't know. Look at the idiot same way, where we hijacked it. Deep, deep, as your, uh, you know, the, the, as when they invite you to come to Sokoto, you know what they're going for. You start sweating. Even in air condition, you're sweating because you, you know what they're going to do to you that night. You know that you, you, you are finished that Friday night. It would not be taking a pillow. Okay, baby. Oh my God in heaven. Hope, hope. Oh dear me. Every idiot. You hijacked this from us. Oh, and said I hijacked the minds of the people. Satis governors, I hijacked ESN. The zoo, I hijacked the Nigerian youths. I hijacked uh, uh and protest. Lai Muhammad said, I hijacked the media. <laughs> but nobody can hijack us. <laughs> hey, my goodness. And uh, I have an announcement to make no more fundraising in Biafra land, please. No more fundraising, I beg of you. Nobody should. I don't care who you are. No making of videos and saying we've run out of this land. That's rubbish. You are soldiers, you remain in the bush until you are resupplied, until you get reinforcement. Do not raise any funds anywhere in the world. And the UK remains shut down until I will, I will announce in a couple of days a new leadership for the United Kingdom, IPOB family. As formidable as ever, we're not going back. I thank all of you for listening this very evening, morning, noon, or night, depending on where you are. Here, you have listened to Radio Biafra this evening, morning, or noon, or night. We don't have any other religion. By being a Biafran, you are religious by nature. That is why our religion is Biafra. And here on Radio Biafra is where we worship because Elohim is our God, Almighty in heaven. From me, from here, believe it or not, with all the love in my heart. Good evening.
Well, this is for BM. This is dedicated to the gallant heroes of the Nigerian Biafra War and IPO families all over the world. I remember the Nigerian Biafra War mm, in the thickness of the Biafra genocide. Hey, one man revived the vanishing hope to life. Ah, let the great Biafra army the fight. 